So here's your number one featherweight contender. He got through a murderer's row to set up this shot at the title, and he knows this may not come around again. He's trying to make the most of it here tonight and head back home, the newly minted UFC featherweight champion of the world. The, the, the winning streaks that you have to have in order to get a featherweight championship opportunity is so great that when you get here, you have to make sure you're ready. This young man is ready. He's prepared mentally. He's prepared physically to go out there and try to become a champion. He told us time and time again, I'm the next Max Holloway. Let's see if he can get it done. It is so hard to get to this spot at 45, 55, 70. He has done it. Now the question beckons, is he good enough to dethrone the champ? So here he is, they call him T-City, short for Triangle City, the Gracie Jiu-Jitsu black belt, Brian Ortega. Brian Ortega is a great fighter, a guy that has all the ability inside the octagon. He started as a Jiu-Jitsu practitioner, but you have seen the evolution of Brian Ortega as his career has continued to go on, has continued to proceed. Brian Ortega is getting better and better and better. He has now found himself staring across the octagon of some of the best fighters the division has ever seen, and he will continue to do that as long as he keeps developing the skills that are necessary. And sometimes it's hard to become a champion without having tasted defeat. A lot of people believe the Max Holloway fight for Ortega will be something he can build upon moving forward. All right, with that, both fighters have now graced the octagon. They will lock the door behind them, ready to go with a crazy fight here at T-Mobile Arena in Las Vegas, Nevada. Our tale of the tape for this featherweight championship fight. All right, to get us started with the official introductions, here is Bruce Buff. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the main event of the evening. <laughs> Herb Dean, he will handle the action inside the octagon. All right, here we go, early portions of this round with Brian T-City Ortega, and it would seem to me, Daniel, path of least resistance, take this fight to the ground and find a choke. But if you talk to Brian Ortega, not unlike a lot of our Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belts, this man has fallen in love with his hands. He wants to strike tonight. We'll see how he chooses to proceed. Shot there looked pretty good, but blocked by the defense. Oh, and he lands another combination here, really starting to get into a striking group. I mean, it's stringing them together so effectively, never doing the same attack more than once. What a job to recognize all the openings in his opponent's defenses. Oh, that's a beautiful land downstairs with the kick. Trying to connect now with the overhand left. No good. Oh, it took land though. Yep. He's going to get team. Oh, what a beautiful counter to the PT there. Oh, somehow, some way he got out. These guys are back and forth. The submission defense wins this transition. Get a good awareness by the defensive fighter. Ortega's back inside control here. I mean, at this point, you just have to do something. You, know, you have to maybe start 
trying to pull guard, grab him, pull him into you to try to change it and get him in your realm where you have the advantage. Under two minutes now to go round one. That was a slick transition. Big ground and pound. All right, right into side control. Off of body strength figures to be put to good use here. Yes, absolutely. And you got to look for his opponent to turn back into him. He should chase guillotine. But the opponent turns to the opposite side. He can take his back, throw his hooks in, try to choke, or flatten him out and just go for the finish. Yes, smart adjustment. Yep. Massive shot from the top. All right, he's got side control here, DC. You know, he's got a lot of different submissions in his arsenal once this fight gets to the ground. He let him step over to the crucifix. First round winding down here. Ortega's back in side control. That horn sounds means we have reached the end of round one. Now take a look back at some of the highlights from that last round, DC. A lot for the replay guys to choose from. I mean, these guys are going to be very busy trying to find what replay to show you guys. Lands on both sides of the octagon. Both guys fought great. What a phenomenal round. You ready to fight? You ready? Let's All right, it. round two. And he's looking for that left hand, just missed. Strong hook lands. Swing and a miss with that punch by T-City, Brian Ortega. Nice body shot there. Both fighters hanging down in the pocket and both landing. Lands a nice jab there. Oh, nice inside leg kick, yeah. Well, he misses with the left punch there. T-City going for the takedown here. Nothing doing there. Stuffs that takedown attempt without issue. Oh, got a pull guard here. Flying triangle attempt. I mean, he pulled him. How in the world did he escape that submission? Champ, these submission setups. Oh, it looks like he's got a couple hooks in here, DC, and defensively, you better be careful. In the half guard. Under three minutes now to go round two. That was nice. If you're the bottom fighter, DC, what do you do? You got to move. You got to shrimp. You got to get up on a hip to try to move your opponent off of you or pull him down to close the space. Well, his superior grappling has certainly been the lead narrative in this one. The takedowns, the ground control, he's got it all going tonight. He's doing a great job of dictating to his opponent, not allowing him to make any decisions in regards to the fight. All right, we'll see how he chooses to defend here. This is some exhausting work, man. I mean, it is so tiring to be fighting in this way. So much wrestling, so much grappling. Expending all this energy trying to hold the guy down. I mean, it's, it, it, no takedown is not fought. No reversal is not fought. Everything they're doing is fought to the very last minute before it gets given up. All right, dominant position here. He's got the full mount, a lot of different ways. Look at him attack that arm triangle on the opposite side. When it's time to finish, he will lock his hands. Great submission defense on full display by the opponent. Well, he continues to manhandle him here on the ground. Oh, good defense, yes. Oh, now he's going to find himself in a little more danger. All right, close guard now. You got to be careful, though. He's got a lot of submissions off his back. Oh, he passes the half guard now. And he's not posturing the lamp. So look for 
a submission attempt. Round three next. Uh -huh. No telestrator for DC tonight, but we'll get you some replays. And if you like face punching, that was a good round. Yeah, where's my telestrator, man? I want to draw this action. But yeah, John, you're right. It was the striking, it was the punches that really did allow him to take control of this round. You ready to fight? You ready? All right, here we go with this third round of this championship fight. Nice straight punch. Well, that's one way to upset the equilibrium. Nice high kick. Left eye starting to shut a little bit. That bear's watching. Big, massive shot lands. Still standing, still in their fight. Well, good news is he rocked him. Bad news is he wasn't able to finish the job, and now his opponent's back in the fight. I mean, you don't get those opportunities very often. You got to take full advantage of them when they're presented to you. T-City gets caught by... Oh, he jumped guillotine right away. Oh, it's getting tight. Oh, look at this. Jumps over in the side mount to try to counter the guillotine. Maybe going with that Von Flew choke. Oh, he got it. Ortega is looking to pass here. Denied by the opponent. Oh, submission attempts and bunches tonight. Oh, that one looks really tight, DC. Fight back up. Not there yet, but might get the submission here shortly. Nice pass. All right, feet on the uh. hips here. Under two minutes to go in round three. Man, look how flexible those legs are. He's got them in rubber guard. I don't think I could do that for sure. I mean, John, don't sell yourself short. You just might be able to do it. But if you do, John, you're doing it with the idea that you're slowing everything down as a defensive fighter. There are submissions, right? There are submissions, but they're very rare submissions that we don't see used very often in the UFC. There it is. Now he's running them out. Great defense by the defensive fighter. Fighter trying to pass here, Uba gets denied. Gets denied, great job, great recognition of seeing what your opponent was trying to do. Yes, yeah, smart adjustment, yep. Ortega's back in full max. Landing strikes nicely here from top position. Oh, trying to pass here, but Dikembe Mutombo style, he gets denied. Blocked! Great job blocking that pass by the bottom fighter. All right, there's the horn. An appreciative crowd responding in kind. He rocked his opponent multiple times there in that round. Looked very confident in doing so. They might even bring in the RP here. This I mean, he was, it was relaxation at its finest. Just so relaxed, so comfortable in the fire, which then allowed him to land these big strikes that had his opponent buzz on many, many occasions but he cannot get desperate. Don't go crazy trying to finish the fight. Let it come to you. Ready to fight? Ready. Fourth round now. Fight scheduled for five five-minute rounds. All right, fourth round is now underway as we get to the championship rounds. What is a fighter's mindset when you get to this 16th minute of the fight? This is when you understand that nothing is ever going to be harder. This is the hardest round in fighting. This is going to really test your will and your desire to become champion. Oh, a strike right there. I'm not sure how many more of these. 
his opponent can take. Massive shot that he landed. Great job. So he finally gets the takedown here. He kept on trying, stayed committed. Oh, it looks like he's setting up for a finish here. Oh, that looks tight. Oh, somehow he gets out. Fantastic submission, D. Might be a submission attempt here, Chad. I mean, you cannot sit in a full guard. When you sit in a full guard, you give these guys so many opportunities. Ortega's back in full guard. Showing off that leg dexterity and flexibility rubber guard now. I mean, it's unbelievable to watch these guys who are able to bring the legs all the way up around the shoulders and just control you. Because to me personally, and I'm no jujitsu expert, to me personally, it feels like this is a position to really just slow everything down. Are there submissions? Yes. But the ideal thing in this position is to slow you down from damaging and really just make you feel more in danger than you really are. He passes the half. Well, he's more than content to work off of his back, DC, where he has been a magician in his UFC career. I'm trying to recover full guard there. Oh, right into Mount. Oh, nice. All right, half guard for him here, and a lot of offensive options, I would think, at his disposal. Oh, he's got a ton of options. He has submission options, but I believe the safest option for him here is going to be to use his grounded pound. Build a base, posture up, throw big strikes, get back to position, posture again, throw big strikes, and just really wear him down with a really secure position in half guard. In the half guard. All right, we'll see if he can apply pressure inside his opponent's guard here, DC. Ten seconds remaining in round four. Ortega's back in full guard now. And there's the buzzer indicating the end of round four. All right, there's the horn. What a round it was, DC. And, of course, the seminal moment, that big knockdown that nearly got his opponent out of there for good. Almost finished the fight, but now he needs to reset, right? Don't rush. Go right. back out into the next round and just try to find that shot again. If he rushes, if he overexerts himself, he will run out of energy and put himself at risk of losing the fight. Well, he had a lot more than a puncher's chance coming in. Big knockdown for him in the previous round, DC. Talk us through the highlight. He got in his opponent's face landed that big punch that put his opponent flat on his back. He couldn't get the finish, but if he lands one more time just like that, he will get the victory. Ready to fight? Ready. We have arrived at this fifth and final round. Clean punch. Well, you didn't see a lot of the body work from him in the earlier rounds, but he's certainly getting after it here. Big shot to the body connects there. We'll see if he can follow it up. Ooh, big shot lands. Oh, nice straight punch there by T-City, Brian Ortega. Well, you can just see he is oozing with confidence and not overconfidence, but a big knockdown in round one, likely the source of that confidence. When everything is going oh, that's how he's the top, and now his opponent in a world of trouble. Beautiful level change. Make him think you're going low and come right over the top with that beautiful overhand. Great punch. Trying for a submission now. Oh, gotta protect your neck. Good job by the champ there. Sliding back up. Right back to the full mount here. Nice defense. All right, he's very comfortable fighting off his back, DC. Now looks like he's trying to hip escape. Yeah, he's trying to hip escape or maybe look for a Kimura here. Good work from the top here by Ortega. Oh, staying busy from top position. He lands another ground strike there. Hold up, give me strikes. 
Two minutes now to go in this one. Well, no surprise to see him rinse and repeat as he continues to target that swelling upstairs. Targeting that swollen eye, getting back after him, making him work, and recognizing that, hey, this is my path. It's working. I'm going to stay on. He's got to start throwing down. All right, he's got the full mount now. Is this one of the most dominant positions in MMA? Is that fair to say? It's a very dominant position. It's one of the most ideal positions you can get to, especially if you're fighting someone that doesn't truly understand that they're not in as much danger as they are. Because it's dangerous, but there are a lot of outs. And if a person isn't very understanding of that, then you can really, really put some damage on them. Reversal on the ground. Are right, working on the ground here. His opponent's feet on the hips. All right, so a competitive title fight tonight, Daniel. As many expected, 25 minutes. Not enough to determine a winner. Slight lean to the champion, or what? I do believe he's still champion. But that's why he's the champion. Because when the challenges are the biggest, he usually will step up. The official decision is in. Bruce Buffer has it. Ladies and gentlemen, after five rounds, we go to the judges' scorecards for a decision. All three judges score this contest 50-45. Declared the winner by unanimous decision, and still the undisputed UFC featherweight champion of the world, Brian T. City Ortega. All right, there's a little smile. Wasn't much for smiles during fight week. He can finally exhale right now because he is still the best in the world at 145 pounds. He's all business in the lead up to these fights.